Hello and welcome. I am Exalite and this is my channel. Today I have a guest. It has my son, Joshua, and he's feeling a little bit nervous. So if you guys can leave comments below of encouragement, I'd really appreciate it and I know he would too. So I'm going to interview Joshua about some of his paranormal experiences and since his sisters aren't here, we're going to talk about some things that they experienced as well. Hello, Joshua. Hello. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm good. All right. So, we're just going to talk about some paranormal experiences you had. And um, the community here is really, really nice and very, very friendly. And they will appreciate you being here, okay? Okay. So, no need to be nervous. They're great. So, you want to start off telling us a story? Well, what would you like to hear first? Anything specific? Um, anywhere you want to start. Okay, we'll start off small, I guess. Uh... So, in one of our old apartments, mm -hmm. uh, I was a big baby, so when I was a child, I would sleep in my mom's room. <laughs> it's not a big baby. On a, on a makeshift... Well, actually, we brought a mattress in at one point yeah. to go next to your bed that I can have. Yeah. But uh, specifically, the bathroom in your room, for some reason, was really bad. Mm -hmm. Like, if we left the door open, we would hear, like, footsteps at the edge of the bed because the bathroom was in front of the bed. Yes. Uh, we would feel, like, stuff brush up against our feet on the bed if we left the door open. Uh -huh. So it was something we always had to keep close, closed. Can I have you stop right here? Yeah. For those of you who watch, have been watching the 31 Days of Halloween, you know that I told a story about my paranormal experiences and the bathroom. And this is the same bathroom that he is speaking of. Yes, uh, this bathroom was not good for some reason. Only, not only the bathroom, but mainly the bathroom. It's like they always had to use the bathroom for some reason. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In the afterlife, go figure. <laughs> but uh, one night, I was laying in there. You were in the living room because you were an adult. You stay up later than I did. Mm -hmm. And I was with our dog at the time, Maggie. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, this stuck with me specifically. I was having just a bad feeling. And Maggie would always look at the bathroom for some reason. I don't know. Maybe it was haunted. And and Maggie was deaf. She couldn't hear anything. Oh yeah, she was deaf. She was. It was she would have to go by her intuition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, one night, the door was open, and I was sitting there, trying not to look at the <laughs> bathroom, and the dog gets up, like ready to fight looking at that door for a solid 10 seconds, mm -hmm. barks one time, and runs out of the room. Hmm. And did you have any kind of a feeling that something was there at the time? Oh, yeah, I felt uncomfortable, especially mm -hmm. after that. Because that's, right. like, something actually happening. Because mm -hmm. the dog's seeing something I don't. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was specifically scary. And... It's the fact that I know that a bunch of stuff happened in there. Mm -hmm. Because I've personally had, like, the door move mm -hmm. to the bathroom. I've had the faucet turn on. Yes, that's the story I told, mm -hmm. was when your dad and I had the faucet turn on. Mm -hmm. I've had it happen alone. I was with my sister multiple times when it happened, actually, like, three times. Mm -hmm. And each time... <laughs> We'd look at each other and be like, go turn it off. <laughs> and both of us would say no to each other. <laughs> like, no, I'm not, I'm not going in there. 
that's the conversation I had with your dad. And he even told me, no, I'm not going in there. Ooh. But it's nothing specifically that I saw happened, mm -hmm. like in the bathroom, but it's the feeling that stuck with me mm -hmm. from that moment. Mm -hmm. It's going to sound cheesy, but it's like stuff that doesn't just go away. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't just forget about it. Right. So there was that. And there was another time. Shocker, I was in your room. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the way the apartment was set up was we had an L-shaped hallway. Mm -hmm. And your room was at the corner of the L. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you looked out of the doorway... You could see both sides of the halls. Mm -hmm. Hall. And there was one time where I was sitting on your bed and I was watching the TV in your room. I, I think you were grocery shopping or something. And the only other person in the house was my sister. Mm -hmm. And I looked to the left out of the doorway. And I see just shadows on the wall. And the way I explain this is it looks like there was a rave. Mm -hmm. Not the lights, but like the motions that people do at a party. Mm -hmm. Their hands are up, going everywhere, like dancing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just that all across the wall. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that, if I remember correctly... The room down the end of that hallway, mm -hmm. the door was shut. Plus, there's no light that can be coming from that room. That's right. Because, first of all, nobody's in, nobody's in it. Right. My sister's in the living room. So that was weird because this shadow is from nothing. Mm. And it's obviously, like, human figures. Right. Like dancing or something. Mm -hmm. So that was specifically weird to me. And the thing that sucked is that I was a child. I'm like, I don't like this. This is scary and abnormal. And the only way I could get to like a comfort zone, being my sister in the living room, was going through that hallway. Mm -hmm. So I had to run through that hallway as fast as I could. I had to tell my sister, like, hey, there are these like shadows on the wall. Mm -hmm. And it's very weird because they're... From nowhere. Mm -hmm. no, no, nothing's making these shadows. Right. So. And there wasn't a window in that hallway. No. There was nothing in the hallway because it was in the middle of the house. Mm -hmm. It was in the middle of the apartment. Right. So I went and told my sister. And we went to go look back at the hall. And nothing was there. Mm. It, they just left. Hmm. But that wasn't the first time I saw them. It wasn't. Well, I should say it wasn't the last time I saw them. Uh -huh. The next time I saw them was when <laughs> now me and my sister are both in your room watching TV. <laughs> my room was the place to be. Your room was the place to be. <laughs> Bec mainly because mine and my sister's room also was not a good area to be in. Mm -hmm. And nobody liked it, so nobody stayed there. That's right. We had a very scary... Your dad and I had a very scary experience with that room at the end of the hall that was your yours and your sister's room mm -hmm. and um um i'm probably going to tell that during during one of these episodes okay but that that room's a whole other thing i rarely had anything good come out of that room down to just the nightmares i had i couldn't sleep in there without having that but that's do you want me can i go ahead and tell the story real quick that we experienced in that room to give the people an idea of how scary that room was yeah we had some people over they had children um our children's age um joshua and they had a daughter were the youngest two and they went they used to play games in that room and um something called murder in the dark do you remember that Oh, that was a long time ago. Yeah, okay. So, but um, um, the older kids would play it too. But at this time, 
um, they went in there and they fell asleep on the beds because it was really, really late. And we used to have like a game day with these friends of ours. And so a lot of times our kids would fall asleep at our house and spend the night or, you know, the kids of mine that were awake would go to their house. Mm -hmm. So they left. No. You thus they left. And their daughter was going to spend the night at our house. And you guys had not come out of the room. Mm. So, and the door was closed. So your dad went to open the door to check on you and Addie. And he grabbed the doorknob and it was solid. It, it wouldn't move. Mm. And he kept trying to twist the doorknob and it would not move. And he said that he knew that there was something on the other side holding the doorknob. And so he put his shoulder up against the door, turned the doorknob, and tried to push his way in. And there was something, he felt resistance, something pushing against him. And he was afraid that it was you and Addie playing a joke. So he didn't want to push too hard because he didn't want to send the two, you know, six-year-olds flying across the room. Mm -hmm. But at some point he realized that the strength that was resisting him, was it was just not possible mm -hmm. that these two small children would be able to resist mm -hmm. this strength. So he pushed really hard just when the tension let up and kind of tumbled into the room. Mm -hmm. And you and Addison were both sound asleep, like snoring asleep, mm -hmm. sound asleep. There was something that was trying to keep your dad from coming in that room with these two, you know, six-year-old children. Mm -hmm. And that was another point where dad said, that's it, we're leaving. We can't live here anymore. It scared your dad, who is very, you know, he was very reluctant to believe in paranormal stuff at, anyway at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But then he started kind of seeing some of the things we were seeing, like the shadow people in our home in Arizona. He stood up and like yelled, holy F, when he saw it, because we've been telling him that <laughs> shadow people walk down the stairs. So he was, at this point, like, um, you know, recognizing that there was something in the house. Because mm -hmm. um, I told him about me being scratched and bleeding and stuff. So he knew that there was something with evil intention mm -hmm. that didn't want him to let him in that room with you. Mm -hmm. I had something in my head that I wanted to say. Now I can't remember. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh... Yeah, that thing is, I was asleep at the time. I had no idea about this. Yeah. And I didn't learn until like a while later. Oh, yeah, not a while later. We weren't going to tell you guys. Oh, yeah. That was when uh, Addie's mom yeah. uh, told you about crosses and like salt rings, right? Well, I already knew about salt rings, but Addie's mom brought over a whole bunch of um, blessed little crosses. Mm-hmm. And um, we put them up all over the apartment. As a matter of fact, we still have one in, in the table right there. In this apartment, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we put them over all the doorways. Mm -hmm. Which helped, from what I remember. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. We put salt outside of the doors. We mm -hmm. sprayed salt water in the house. We weren't the only people that had salt outside of the doors either. That's right. Down the same apartment building, there's people with salt. I even just their door, their windows and stuff. I told them that, that they must have been having issues as well. Mm -hmm. Which is scary, because yeah. that means it wasn't just like an isolated thing. Yes. Other people in the apartments were having it. Yes. Those apartments were made in like 1962 mm -hmm. or something. Um, it was not too far from the air base, so it was probably airmen and their families and, and who thousands of people. Mm -hmm. Could have lived there by the time we got there. Mm -hmm. So we have no idea what happened in those apartments. That's scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Do you want to? Well, is there something else you, you want to tell about? Oh yeah, I, w I wasn't done. Okay. Uh, Getting but, less shy by the minute. <laughs> but the the shadows in the hall. Uh huh. Uh, the second time I saw them, me and Maya were in your room, and I once again looked over into the hallway through the doorway, and saw them, and I'm like. I'm telling my sister, like, look at the hallway. And she looked at the hallway. Mm -hmm. And we're both looking at the shadows, confused and kind of uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't like this. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we just, I, if I remember correctly, we just left the room. We just went in the living room. Mm -hmm. We didn't deal with that. <laughs> and for some reason, we're alone again. Nobody <laughs> else is in the house. So that was that story. Well, I think your dad was traveling for work by that point. Oh, yeah. But I mean, yeah. like, your, your, your older sister, sister wasn't there. You, yeah. It's just weird. Yeah. Uh, funny, because that. As I said, like with the faucet and stuff, that's not the first time me and my sister have been alone in that room and have stuff happen. Right. Well, those are those. What else would you like to do? You, I want you to tell them about the uh, thing that happened with SpongeBob. Oh, goodness. Okay. <laughs> we sound crazy. I no, want, these people I, here, they understand. I want you to tell them what happened with SpongeBob. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> That's a sane <laughs> sentence. You know, nobody expects to hear that sentence. Nobody expects to hear that, especially in this scenario. Yeah. But uh, there was one time. This is mainly my sister's story, but I'm involved. So mm -hmm. I was outside. Finally. You finally got outside. Finally. And I went straight <laughs> back inside for another 15 years. <laughs> but uh, I was outside. I was playing with some friends. I'm still around the same age. I think I'm eight at this point. Yeah. And my sister, well, my oldest sister, comes outside and calls my name uh, because in front of our apartments we had a very long pathway. And I was at the other side of the path. And she called my name. She was like, Josh, come here. And I said, okay. So I went down to her. I went to the apartment. And she said, were you just in mom's room? And I was like, no, I've been outside. She's like, are you sure? But I'm sitting there like, I'm, I think I've been out for about 30 minutes, yeah? <laughs> Finally, no one's in my room. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I told her, I'm like, yeah, I've been out here for around 30 minutes, I think. She said, okay. With a smile, she's like, okay. And went back inside. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so later I learned that why she asked me that was because her and my other sister were in the living room. I don't know what they were doing. They were doing something. But they didn't know where I was. Good babysitters. Good babysitters. They didn't. I don't know what you were doing again, man. You're you're not I've never in these stories. <laughs> but they were doing something. They didn't know where I was. I think. And they went to the hallway looking for me, and the TV in your room turned on full blast, and it was the Flying Dutchman. In Spongebob. Right, which is a ghost ship. Yes. Saying, Arg, I knew this cabin was haunted. Yeah. That exact line. Yeah. That's what it started with, and it jump-scared my sisters. Yeah. <laughs> in this scenario again, they're looking at each other, having to, like, talk very loudly because the TV is on 100% volume. Like, <laughs> go in there and turn the TV off. <laughs> See what's happening. But actually, before they did that, they were screaming at me because <laughs> they thought it was me turning the TV on. Uh-huh. 
So there's yelling like, Josh, turn the TV on. What are you doing? Turn the TV off. Off, yeah. And my oldest sister walked in there, saw nobody was in there, and that's when she left and was telling my other sister to go in there and turn the TV off. <laughs> because she <laughs> was scared. Of her. Yeah, because she was scared because nobody was in there. Right. She went in there looking for me, being angry, <laughs> and that anger 180 into fear <laughs> as she 180'd out of that room. <laughs> So I left her, left her little sister to go turn the TV off and yeah. deal with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here, you do some poltergeist shit. Yeah, you go in there and deal with that. <laughs> so they turned it off. Uh, th they looked at the remote. The remote was just on the bed, nothing mm -hmm. touching it. Uh, obviously, a TV just doesn't turn on. Right. So that's when they were talking about it. <laughs> and they went outside, saw me, and told me to go over there, and that's why they asked me right. if I was in the room. <laughs> I'm like, no, I... Yeah, that scared I them wasn't. pretty bad, and especially what came out of the TV about, our yeah. guy told you this cabin was haunted. It's so specific and yeah. on topic, which yeah. is the weird thing. Yeah. Like, if it just turned on on SpongeBob, it would be like... It would be scary. Like, right. that's weird. It's like, oh, wow, you turned on on Spongebob? Try harder. Yeah. <laughs> but it's the specific line that was yeah. just so on topic yeah. about, like, ghosts and being haunted. Right. And the Flying Dutchman himself a ghost? Yeah. Like, that's even weirder. Yes. Yes. Well, I appreciate you sitting down with me, Josh, because I know that you are nervous. Mm -hmm. And like I said, everybody below, give Josh big thanks and tell him you appreciate him coming and sharing these stories and i hope you're enjoying the 31 days of halloween oh he says he has another one all right let's go first of all I, i'm a little nervous because i've been saying like my sisters and i'm differentiating them by saying older and younger oh but <laughs> so i hope it's they're not both, confusing they're both other, older than you well yeah but <laughs> the younger sister yeah yeah so, I hope that's not confusing. It's, it's, it's fine. But, here's another one. This isn't mine. It's my youngest sister's that's still older than me. <laughs> and our friend at the time. Uh, there was one time where my friend, our friend, was staying over, staying the night. We call her E. Yeah, E. And the funny thing is that E was literally one apartment down. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so this wasn't like a one-off thing. Mm -hmm. She would stay the night almost every night. Yes. And well, she lived with us for one summer at the other apartments. Literally, just lived with us. Yes. But uh, what's special about this night is that this happened, and nothing with her ever really happened paranormal-wise. If it was, it was very small. Mm -hmm. uh, like a faucet turning on. Mm -hmm. I actually heard, she told me some stories about her place. Oh, really? That happened, yeah. Apparently, like, uh, cabinets would open. Oh, really? Yeah. But that's besides the point. Uh, she was sitting in the recliner in the living room, and... E and my sister were both there. My sister was on the couch. And she was facing the recliner. And E was facing... Well, in front of her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so hard not to explain the layout of the house, but mm -hmm. I know that's going to make it so much more confusing and long. <laughs> yeah. But um, my sister, while E was sleeping, saw something come up behind the recliner like a like a uh, like a shadow shadow figure yeah it, it didn't have any color it was just a black figure mm -hmm. so my sister told me she's sitting there like what do i do about that <laughs> that's kind of weird that's mm -hmm. looming over my friend mm -hmm. and then suddenly the recliner obviously it's a recliner it goes back and up Mm -hmm. just goes as far back as possible and then flings back up. <laughs> and E is sleeping mm -hmm. and gets 
whiplash from this. <laughs> like she's sleeping there, wakes up, dipping back and forward. And it also, her hair was over the back of the recliner. Oh. So it pulled on her hair too. Oh. So not only is she like going back and forth, she's having her hair pulled. Oh. So she wakes up immediately crying because she's like, ow, that hurt and surprised me. I was sleeping. <laughs> and then she realizes nothing was there. That's crazy. Because uh, my sister said it just like vanished. Wow. Kind of just disappeared. So. And where was I again? You were in your room sleeping. Oh, you okay. I was time. home. You were here this time. Okay. You were sleeping. And what's weird is that they didn't, they didn't even wake up anybody up and tell anybody. They no. just kind of sat in the living room crying to each other. Aww. Like literally crying. Well, my sister wasn't crying because she was like, that was that's scary. That's what 11 years like. Yeah. But E was crying because that was, first of all, really scary. Yeah. And new to her. Because mm -hmm. like I said, this stuff doesn't happen even though she's here like every night. Mm -hmm. And not only did something happen it was like really big like it actually hurt her like right. it pulled her hair and it also like woke her up affected her body yeah that was that's crazy that's like worse a slingshot but yeah. it was holding her hair so she couldn't fling out yeah mm -hmm. and it that i remember the next day they were talking about something happened mm. And they wouldn't tell me because uh, they didn't want to bring attention to it. They didn't want to give it talk attention. About it. Yeah, they didn't want to give it attention. Plus, it's yes. probably traumatic for them. They don't want to even right. think about it. Mm -hmm. And it took well, a while. That's what we had always told all you guys: like, don't give it attention because mm -hmm. it only it, just feeds their ego. Feeds it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the same recliner I was sitting in. If you guys have listened, like I said, to uh, my paranormal story, story my the one that says my painful paranormal experience, that's the same recliner I was sitting in when I started getting bloody scratches. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. That was in the same apartment, too. It, yes. Well, it probably wasn't that far mm, yeah. off from that time. Yeah. Uh, did, we, did we bring that recliner into the next apartment? Yes. Okay, so that was the same recliner that my sister fell, <laughs> fell backwards in trying to eat a sandwich. <laughs> That's besides the point. That's just a funny memory. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that one, I know it's not mine, but that spe specifically stays with me mm -hmm. because it's also something that, like, I would interact with. Yes. It's something I saw every day. Yes. And I had to be fearful of now. Yeah. Not at that point, but after a while because right. they eventually told me. Yeah, And nobody, mm -hmm. nobody told me that for... So we had moved out of that apartment. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that that had happened. Yeah. So that, like I said, that stuck with me. Even though yeah. it wasn't my experience. Right. That specifically scared me. Right. And that was that. <laughs> okay. Okay. I can wrap up? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you so much, Joshua. Mm -hmm. I have really, really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it you did a great job thank you it was fun good i'm glad all right you guys please don't forget to like this video and give it a thumbs up if you're not subscribed please subscribe you know the drill it helps my channel be seen thank you and good night good night